I didn't see any kids, but just in case. Um, now would be a good time for a potty break. So, so this is, I, I chopped it up, but this is basically the first chapter of my thesis, and uh, it's entitled Body Cavities. Body Cavities. My story is full of holes. I'm full of holes myself. Chasms, pits, ditches, craters, all of them vast and gaping. First, there is a mouth. I opened my bathroom door to a man I had never met, his face masked with a hood and handkerchief, naked, skin still slick from the bathtub, I opened my mouth. I said, oh, as in, oh no, or oh god, or oh please no, the O oh of panic. But my O oh in the air echoed like open, overpower. He kicked in my door and flicked the light switch off. Shut the fuck up, he demanded and forced me onto the floor. Who are you, please? What are you doing in my shut the fuck up, bitch? Darkly, his fingers found my mouth, and I learned that a grown man can fit his fist inside. His fingers passed the molars into the gullet, my tunnel of breath. He sat on top of me and drove down, clothed for now, only to keep my heels from kicking his stomach again as I writhed on the tile. On the floor of my bathroom, I learned my own tongue and its parts. I learned that the taste buds on the back of the tongue observe only bitter flavors. You see, the tip of the tongue savors sweetness, the ways I had used a tongue before. How I plucked and devoured a ripe navel from the orange grove next to my grandmother's house after school. How I peeled it with my painted fingernails, the zest spritzing the humid afternoon, and the juice ran down my forearm as I slurped plump wedges from my palm, wedges the flavor of sunset, licked the sweetness from my fingertips in the midday Florida heat. That part of the mouth I had known. The part of a palate that discerns ice cream and warm pies, lips and warm lovers, this man thrust his fingers to the back of my tongue, and the back is for bitter, a gag of odor and oil. But when I learned the parts of my tongue on the floor, it seems I had learned them incorrectly. I looked them up and learned that the parts do not exist. What science had proven years ago about the mouth, about bitter, sweet, sour, and salt, is now a common misconception. I read that, in fact, I didn't taste his pungent knuckles on the back of my tongue. I read that, in fact, the tip isn't made for oranges or pies. A tongue is a tongue is a tongue and a mouth, no matter where that man can fit his fingers. How many holes are in the body? I searched this question one of my wakeful nights. Even the internet didn't know. Men have seven and women have eight, one source wrote. Men have nine and women have ten, claimed another source. Of holes, the internet only understood that women have one more than men. How many, then? Somewhere, the fact must be stored. At the end of some dusty bookshelf in the anatomy section, the truth about holes, measurable, exact, unchanging, the whole story. Tear ducts or punctums. Sometimes I can feel the prickle pending, a tickle in my nose, a tautness of throat, cheeks white hot. I know I'm going to cry. I hear it like a train, the smell of dirt before a drizzle. In these moments, tears are relief. But the hot rush that broke from my eyes that night was abrupt and compulsory, straight from the gorge. Gagging tears, punched in the nose tears. The kind of wet you wish you could suck back into you. Tears you didn't mean to give away. My throat burbled and sloshed behind the thrust of his knuckles. I continued to shout until I was in within, within seconds of suffocation. Shut the fuck up if you don't want to die. Please. And why that word? Why a word used in polite requests? A word that means to give pleasure or to satisfy. How a word can be so unlike itself. He hooked his fingers behind my front teeth and jerked my head back to my spine, forcing me into the corner of the room. I strove to reach any part of him I could, only managing to scrape his forearms. Then he grabbed a fistful of my hair and bludgeoned my head into the wall, lifted my scalp from my skull, a separation you cannot unfeel. Again, I darted my fingers into his eyes, and he began striking my head against the tile. Despite the inestimable holes in our bodies, nothing feels missing. We take our physical inventory in the mirror, in the shower, we notice nothing gone. Each hole is, in fact, a part, an advantage, and not a loss. A hole is sound and scent, sensation. But if there is a hole in the backyard, you might fill it up with soil. A hole in your sweater, and you sew it shut, or throw away the garb. In this way, a hole is an absent part, something escaped, something incomplete, that hole you didn't already have, the one that is taken. First, it was the outer ear, the oracle, or the pinna. Then the words traveled down the canal and struck the eardrum. Then the bones of the middle ear, hammer, anvil, stirrup, and an intricate machine. 
With buzzes and zaps, the fluid-filled cochlea stirred, tiny hairs registered the movements before turning them into signals. Only then could my brain decode the sounds. I have a gun, he said. A gun, he said, but the words had traveled all that way. If only I could have heard it faster right out of his mouth, maybe I would have had a moment to strategize, escape. I waited for translation. I waited for my cochlea to signal what he had in his pocket, and by then, part of the struggle was done. With his words, he carved a perforated hole into my body, his hypothetical bullet and my hypothetical death. Once, I searched synonyms for vagina. I stumbled upon some startling answers. Gash, slit, snatch, and most disturbing, ax wound. What struck me most about these words is that none of them sound like a hole you can own one of your many parts. Instead, each sounds like a hole that has been cut out of you, the type that is taken or missing, cracked or broken, something that begs a bandage. When asked to report the attack in detail, I couldn't find the words to describe what happened to my body. The words were filthy or clumsy or too anatomical or too slang, and it occurred to me that there are many ways to know an opening. Vagina, the word for gynecological visits, formal essays, and anatomy books. Womb, the pillowy alcove where I nurtured my daughter for nine months. Pussy, one, the pornier version of vagina. Or two, an insult to men. Cunt, a caustic word that is almost never referring to anatomy. Missing, though, is the term for that hole through which you are raped. Pores, it might have already begun. I don't remember it clearly. The zipper, the pull, the vial push, and then he paused. I've got a friend, he said. And for a moment, I thought another man would break into the door and join us. I thought of what this man might bring with him, if he would have a gun too, if he would be even more vicious with my body on the tile. But before I had a chance to sweat, the man continued, I've got a friend, he said, in the room with your baby. At once, I was aware of how many holes a person can have gaping, how many places a body can be cut open, pride ajar like the serrated jaws of a tin can, every pore a puncture, a person made entirely of holes. If he hears a fucking peep through the door, he'll kill her. So silently, I counted every pore. When I searched how many holes are in the human body, many of the sources did not account for pores. Of course, the internet only knew that there were millions or trillions, too many, inestimable, a number only the body can 